Welcome. Over the years, uh, I've been giving advice and pointers to my students about how to present a technical talk, or even sometimes giving some pointers about teaching scientific techniques and scientific uh, met uh, methods and material to people. Uh, I do not claim that I know much more than the average person out there, but instead of repeating each time the advice, I'm just put them here in this presentation, in, the, in this small screencast, and hopefully they will be useful. Um, if you have any comment or suggestion, please put them in the comment box. I'm just going to give you my overall approach on how to deliver a technical presentation and also teaching in particular in the field of physics, mathematics, chemistry, this kind of things. Um, I will not really, uh, this presentation is not about explaining how to use PowerPoint or Keynote or any other uh, presentation software. It's more about the general philosophy on how to convey a presentation, but also um, what is really the right mindset to have when you try to give a talk like this. So the point is, let's talk about the art of conveying difficult concept. And I like this quote, uh, which is something I wrote sometimes in my, uh, uh, some time ago in my email signature, and it was a modification of a quote I saw somewhere. Uh, so I, I really strongly believe in this. And uh, which is says that my mission as a teacher is to make students aware of the ability to learn difficult things. So the point is, uh, this is a very loaded quote, but the point is, you have to start at the outset when you give a talk or when you give a lecture for a course or a tutorial you have to start with the mindset that you want students to learn something i know it sounds obvious when you say put it that way but the, the reality is that more than more often than not people enter with a different mindset when they give a talk they give a talk about oh i'm going to show them or i'm going to look them how smart i am or I'm going to show them all the stuff I've realized in my life. Uh, I'm sorry to break the news, but most people do not actually care much about this. Uh, people who are ready to, um, to really invest half an hour or an hour to listen to you are not really there for, uh, to listen to self-pontification. Instead, they are there to learn something. So if you start with the wrong mindset, you essentially have lost, it's a lost cause to start with. So of course there are cases like, for example, if you go to a prestigious speaker, like a Nobel Prize winner who give a talk about their life, uh, this is a different story, but this is not what we are talking about here. And in fact, most of the time, those talks are also about inspirational to the students. And I remember to the students, so that three the students remain the central part. So the goal of this tutorial is, is fairly simple. I would like you to become a better and a more efficient technical communicator and also a better teacher. So actually most of the pointers I'm going to give you apply to both the teacher and also the, uh, uh, somebody who gives a talk, especially at the undergraduate level and a graduate level. Um, so here we go. First of all, I like something that I really <laughs> Uh, insist a lot on remember to to be chill the point is there are many ways to do a presentation well so there is a technical approach I think that I'm going to talk about but I th really think that really if you start with the right mindset of r really this communication to the student with the students as a focal point instead of yourself as a focal point there are many ways to do it well I also believe and this is why I said, remember to be chill, that you can do very, uh, you can perform very serious tasks without taking yourself too seriously. And this is also important uh, because this idea of a more relaxed atmosphere is also helpful for students, which co we come with in different mental state, I would say, different, different place in their life and uh, different interests maybe in the topic that you are going to cover. Um, of course, you don't need to use all the, all or any of the tricks I will present, but I really hope that it will give you some inspiration. 
And I would like you to really think about the big picture here. And again, the big picture is what is the focal point, which is the student. Okay. So the guiding principle, which is really a principle that actually comes from the art. Uh, this is something I learned many years ago when I took seminars on how to give talks. It was given by a person who had the Grammy Awards and his point was very simple. So he, had nothing, he didn't know anything about science, engineering or chemistry and he was giving talks to, to a bunch of people like me. And his principle was very simple. He says, do not expect too much effort from the audience. If what you're talking about, if the plot is too complicated in a movie, or if what you're saying is really missing important points, you are going to lose the audience very quickly. Do not expect that the effort is going to be made by the audience. Of course, some effort will be made, but the real the responsibility of keeping the audience engaged is the speakers. This is really important. So this is really important to put on a show, I would say, uh, not necessarily a show like in, a, like in Hollywood, but a show that makes you, uh, that makes the audience want to listen to you and want to keep learning. And this is something that's, that takes time and, and preparation, as I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Uh, so your charge is really to convince the audience to listen to your message. Uh, I, I've, this is the mistake I hear so often, and actually, unfortunately, mostly by very senior people, senior teachers and senior speakers, who maybe have a different ways of looking at this, and often say, the, the student should make the effort to pay attention after it, after all, it's for them I'm doing this. So you see the problem with this sentence. I'm sure you've heard that sentence before. The problem with this sentence is that it goes against the principle I gave you that the focus point is, should be the students. That sentence, which, which we hear all the time, is about the focal, focal point is about the speaker, which is, in my opinion, the main mistake. So I really hope that you, you start to be convinced by this. So here we go. I'm going to basically have three parts in this presentation. Uh, the first part will be on the general principle, almost psychological, some cheap psychology. I'm no psychologist, of course. Uh, maybe even some cheap philosophy because I'm not a philosopher either. That will be part one. Part two will be more about more technical tricks. And part three, which is optional, so you will be able to stop uh, the YouTube video if you are still with me at that time. It will be about two examples I want to show you how to convey a scientific message. So first, let's go and talk about the part one. And it's all, all about attitude and mindset. Why are you giving a talk? All right. OK, so there are many different ways. You are giving a talk because your advisor asks you to give a talk. You are giving a talk because you are proud of the work you have done and you want to present it. You want other people to know about it. You are giving a talk because you have been invited in a conference or because it's a requirement for your degree. But the reality is when at the time when you prepare your talk, it's really about why and what you want to convey during that moment uh, that you're going to get in front of the audience. Might be 15 minutes, might be 20 minutes, might be 45 minutes, doesn't really matter. The point is that why are you giving the talk? Why do you want to get from it? So I, I really like this, uh, this idea of thinking about your role as a speaker Be beyond preparing slides, which I, I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. The role of a speaker can be understood as actually as a leader. So, um, and even if you talk to somebody, uh, quote unquote, above you, your advisor, your dean, uh, uh, audience, a different, the governor, whatever, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When you give the talk, when you are at the lectern, you are in charge. You are the leader. And the audience is there looking at you. In fact, the setup of a conference room is clear. You are leading. And so that means that your role as a leader is, uh, is, is, to, is to show leadership, of course, and that means that the leadership principles should apply in that situation. And I'm, I'm not going to give a talk about leadership here, of course, but I'm going to highlight three 
principles of leadership that should apply to you as a speaker, since you are really the leader at that time. And so the three uh, things that I always feel personally that are the most important for a leader, for, for an efficient leader, and of course, I'm not the only one to believe this. These are things that we can see uh, in, in many different books and, and studies. The first one is to be empathetic. I'm going to talk about that in a second. The second one is to be a good listener. Of course, it's related, being a good listener uh, and uh, showing empathy are related. And finally, in my opinion, uh, a, a good leader should be a role model. So how do uh, those three traits uh, translate into you being a speaker and preparing a talk? So the first one uh, thing I want to talk about is empathy. Of course, you know, the empathy is the, the ability, of course, essentially to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. OK, and this is extremely powerful. In my opinion, as a speaker, when I pre prepare slides, I think the empathy is the most important trait. You have to for some ex for some for a few minutes, you have to transport yourself in an out of body experience and look at you. What do I want to listen from that person, that person being you? <laughs> right. What do I why would that if I were part of the audience, what would I want to hear? What, how would I want this message to be conveyed? So <clears throat> in other words, and I mentioned this, the talk is not about you. The talk is about that person which is in the audience. That's the point. That's the main thing. So your talk is, of course, about the listener. So you have to put yourself in the listener's shoes. You have to adapt to the audience. And it goes back to what I was saying about uh, uh, the fact that the, the, the speaker has this task of adapting to the audience. And the mistake number one I see, and again, it doesn't matter of the seniority, is that people believe that the audience should adapt to the speaker. That fails 99% of the time. This is the other way around. The speaker has to adapt to the audience, so you have to be flexible. Um, it's difficult to ask people to be flexible when they give a first talk, when they're very nervous, it's very difficult to, to be able to change a little bit. Of course, it comes with, to change during the course of a talk or in fact, the course of, uh, of teaching, but it is actually possible. And this is, uh, this is something that you, you will learn. Uh, I will also give you, uh, some good news about this in the, in one of my last slides of the presentation about being flexible. And I'm sorry to tell you, but in this, in this multicultural and international diversity, no, I'm sorry, but not everybody thinks like you. Not everybody has the same background as you. Not everybody has the same cultural jokes that find funny like you may. So this is called empathy. It's called empathy. And you also have to realize that you have to be humble. If somebody clearly did not understand what you were talking about, 50% uh, of the time, it's because you didn't explain it well. Okay, it's not always because of that, but very often it might well be. So the second thing is to be a good listener. And again, did I mention to you that your talk is not about you, it's about the audience? Check the audience. If you're giving a talk live, hopefully we will have more and more talks in presence of a real audience. Look at what the, look at the body language. Are they listening to you? Are they checking their mail? Are they playing a game on the phone? It's important to make sure that you keep them and, and also to, to show that you are paying attention to them. Okay. That they are your focal point. So if it's online, you can imagine people that are in front of you. And do not hesitate to do to make eye contact. Um, so I, there are, I like to say two things about this, the eye contact. Do not. The reason why I think eye contact is important is because peop, some another mistake we see very often that people watch this slides. They are basically talking to the screen, which is. And so the audience sees the back of the person. So this is a message. So when 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 a speaker basically spent 99% of the time looking at the slide, that speaker turns their back to the audience. So the principle, the cardinal principle about the, the, the talk being about the audience is obviously broken. I mean, how can it be about the audience when all everything that the audience sees is the back of the, of the speaker? So this is important to actually look at the, at the, 
uh, at the at the audience. The second thing I also like to say is uh, you you also have to be careful, especially when you when you give uh, lectures like a course for a class. Uh, some students um, may feel very uncomfortable about the eye contact, so you have to know your audience. Uh, so do not impose this on them. Don't bully students. You can actually bully students by just insisting on the eye contact when they feel uncomfortable. So this is a little bit more subtle, uh, but it's very important to realize that the audience will not behave the way you want. This is not the way it works. So you have to adapt to the audience. And I also like the number three of good leadership. Remember, those, this topic I'm talking about now is about a speaker and being a leader, is to be a role model. No, you don't have to wear a cape to go give your talk, but being a good role model, you essentially want people to listen to you, to become like you, so to speak. You want them to know what you want, what you know. You, know, you have a piece of information that you want to convey at the beginning of the talk, and you really want the audience to say, oh, I, I'm really happy to know this now. So you want to, they want to know this, you want to show uh, you want to captivate the audience so that they really feel like they see somebody that they would really like to listen to uh, that will help you keep to keep them engaged and of course to keep them interested. Uh, one thing that I also always feel very important and um, which but it's it's kind of a personal choice really do not take yourself too seriously. You know it's it's uh, it's not because you say something in a serious tone that what you are saying is interesting. I'm sorry to break the news. Um, you can convey extremely complex topics, extremely com complex concept without taking yourself too seriously. That doesn't mean that, that it's, a, that's the circus. I mean, a class is not a circus. There are moments that are lighter and moments that are uh, much more serious. So this pacing is very important. And I will talk about pacing in a second. Okay. So summary so far. It's all about mindset. And in fact, I just put a copy of the book there that kind of I read a few, maybe 10 years ago. It's, it's, a strong, it's strongly, uh, it's, a, it's not a very big book and I, I strongly re recommend uh, you to look at it. Uh, the mindset and the attitude, how to actually look at, at the situation and how to ad adapt and, and prepare the situation to, to be your best. So I strongly recommend this one. It's all about mindset. You have to put yourself in the member of the audience shoes. I told you this. This is the empathy. So remember the, 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 the empathy that you have to show as the leader, as the speaker, as in the, your role as the leader of the room. Uh, what would you expect if you were part of the audience? So this is kind of the empathy. If you were the audience and you came to listen to you, what would you want to hear? What part would you change? And finally, do not assume. Uh, People assume way too much. In fact, there are studies that show that statistically, especially if you're talking about um, a, a new audience, people you don't know very well, or maybe when you give a, core, a class, the first, couple, the first couple of lectures you give, uh, you don't know people, and you assume. You assume people have some fluctuation around the average. Well, guess what? Studies have shown that when you assume people are around the average, you are likely to be wrong. So sometimes there is even, even something ironic is that if you think something about people, yeah, you might actually be better off thinking the opposite. So you see what I'm saying here. Of course, don't do that either. The point is, do not assume too much. Be patient. Be empathetic. Okay? Make sure you know your audience. Take your time. Okay. Part two. I'd like to give you some tricks and practical considerations after this big picture. The tips I'm going to talk about will be about timing, pacing, and density, the content of the, of the slide, how to enrich students' learning experience, and finally, I'll talk about how to convey a complex topic. So let's talk first about timing and pacing. Uh, this is actually a very important topic uh, that is not extremely difficult to implement, and yet it's central when you, when you prepare a talk. Imagine that you're given 30 minutes to give a talk, or you are giving a lecture and you have 45 minutes, let's say. And uh, of course, you prepare. You prepare your slides. But when you prepare your slides, you, the first question you have to ask yourself is, what is it that I want to teach them? 
what what is the take home message and the the very uh, frequent mistake that's made by by speakers mostly ju very often junior ones but even i've seen senior ones making the same mistake is to have too many concepts so they say oh especially students i've done so much work in this 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 and that i'm just going to give you the full menu it's not going to be a five course dinner it's going to be a 20 course dinner but you know what i'm going to show them everything i've done in my internship of course those talks always fail because there are too many concepts uh, and what's important we don't know because there are too many things and it's just going all over the place you lose the audience it's an example again of the principle that a, such a talk where we have 20 topics is a talk about the speaker is no longer a talk about the audience so you see, I'm really trying to, to convey this general principle about the audience rather than about the speaker. So my experience is that if you cannot convey much more than a couple of new concepts in 30 minutes. I know it hurts. That means that you probably have to drop some of them, but you have to focus on this. When you give a lecture for, more for teaching, uh, I think that 45, after a 45 minute mark, you should take a break and let people a uh, little bit recuperate and just 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 to to regroup and uh, also you have to realize when you do the pacing uh, that the attention span is not constant the attention span is actually uh, fluctuates like the graph on the right hand side shows and it's very important to kind of have checkpoints so the checkpoints are shown as the little little uh, peaks there on the on the graph and those checkpoints allow you to basically take stock and allow students to regroup as well midway through the, to the talks. Uh, sometimes this is a good point to make a, to make a small, a lighter, a, a lighter thing, like a joke or something like that. Believe, believe me, you do not actually plan those. Um, the, the, uh, people who, who are more on the lighter side, it comes with experience. But so when you give a presentation, especially I would think, for example, a thesis presentation or a longer invited talk, uh, it's a good idea to take bite size about 10 minutes, every 10 minutes to say, OK, what have we learned so far? Kind of thing. So and now let's move on. We have this. So that way, when you do this, that will allow to the, the strangler. So people who've actually ran, uh, uh, were left behind after seven minutes have a chance to come back on board. And so that allows you to keep going and to really regroup. And this is, this is what's uh, very interesting with this graph here, which is, which is very accurate. In fact, you're trying each time to, to, to get people back, the, the, as I say, the stranglers. Uh, it's a little bit, if you think about uh, a, a cycling race, like the Tour de France, uh, imagine that there would be no uh, stages. They would just have to run to, drive, to ride all the 20 plus stages at once without any breaks. That means that you would have people who are five hours behind the leader and that would, then, of course, they would give up, right? <laughs> Clearly. So that's the reason why you have those checkpoints every day. You have those checkpoints every day and then you keep people's interest and actually uh, this, is, this is how things work here. So please do not go too fast. Uh, this, is, this is, again, not about you... Uh, <laughs> uh, uttering a lot of information just because you can remember again the principle it's about the audience do not speak faster than the audience audience can listen to also it's not a bad idea to prepare because that way you minimize the blanks and the um uh actually here uh let me see i want to actually this at the, oh, hold on there was something uh no 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 it wasn't the previous. No, OK, you see my point. OK, so I just spent 20 seconds uh, speaking us and blanks and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to prepare. Now, for those of you who are listening, who are extremely nervous, it's OK. Being nervous is part of the game and these things will usually improve. And yes, you will have moments of blanks and err and so on and so forth. I mean, come on, I have lots of them and pr probably just in this presentation alone, I have many of them. The point is, Try to be mindful of this so that you can move forward with, with improving your presentation. So a little bit more about pacing. Teaching is repeating. Uh, th that's another big, big principle. When I, when I teach a course in quantum mechanics, there are a couple of topics, maybe a handful, and I keep repeating them. In fact, it becomes a joke. Uh, and 
maybe students think I'm crazy or maybe they think that I'm, I'm losing my mind, that I forgot I already said it, but of course it's not. It's a, the point is that by the end of the course, the, these, are, these concepts, they know them very well and become second nature. So teaching is repeating. Um, sh did I mention the teaching is repeating? I think so. Okay, so teaching is repeating. Recap frequently, especially when you give a, a, a course. Uh, do not hesitate after just a small section to say, okay, what have we done so far? Kind of thing. That's very useful. Uh, use metaphors. I really love metaphors. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of examples of them at the end of this talk. Uh, however, metaphors are the double-edged sword. They can be very useful, but you have to clearly say what are the limitations of the metaphors. Okay? Uh, and also sometimes it cannot be appropriate, so be very careful. A metaphor is never, never uh, coming out of your head during a talk. It has to be prepared. You have to think about that. Do not improvise metaphors, please. And finally, about pacing. One thing that you, we, have, we have learned in the age of bite-sized information, you know, tweets and small messages and things like that, is that people have a very good attention span for very short bite-sized information but not so much for, for, uh, for longer piece of information. So again, be, um, be mindful of this and make sure that you package your presentation in such a way that you have those bite size. Again, you may not like it. You may say, oh, bite size are for people with short attention span. It doesn't matter. I, actually, it doesn't matter what people think about this. The point is, it's about the audience, and the audience, more likely than not, will respond to a delivery with bite size. It's not about you, it's about the audience. Did I mention that already? I think so. Uh, do not go too fast, of course, I already mentioned that. Uh, one mistake we see very often is people who start to accelerate. They look at their watch and they say, oh my gosh, I still have 20 slides and I have two minutes, so I'm going to show them what, how I can do it. I'm going to Hussein Bolt my talk. Don't do, don't do that. It's okay. It's perfectly okay to say, listen, I'm running out of time. I spend more time than I thought I would in this point. I'm just going to skip the few slides. So here, this is, this is the first pointer I want to give you. Uh, use topical decks, what I mean by that. Uh, and it's related to the bite size. Make sure you slice up you slice your presentation in a few slight uh, subtopics that you can easily prepare. That way, if you have to skip something, you can skip one of those four or five slides together. That's very helpful when you have to skip things and accelerate. Also, when you, uh, when you are giving a talk for a lecture, for, for you know, a multiple lecture course, uh, and you realize that you had to spend more time on a, to a difficult topic because the audience just didn't catch it. You could see from the body language that, as I always like to joke, that uh, students' eyebrows were starting to form question mark, uh, then you had, to, you had to spend more time. So that means that, you, of course, you ran out of time at the end. It's best not to accelerate and come back to it later or maybe give it as a, as a take-home uh, assignment. But do not accelerate. Acceleration is about you covering all the material. It is no longer about students learning. Okay, you see the theme here. Okay, now... Another thing to do about avoiding acceleration is, of course, to have a reasonable number of slides. Uh, I, how many times do I see people with, with they have a 10-minute talk and they have 40 slides? I mean, that doesn't work. So, and I, when we ask students, well, why do you keep so many slides? And they usually say, well, you know, I've done this. I really think I would need to say it. And I say, yeah, I know you may want to say it, but you don't have time. You can't afford it. Okay. So the point is, you have to make choices, and this is the preparation. So you can always have the test, keep or delete. Do you keep it, uh, slides or do you delete it? Okay, so the, quest, the ultimate test is very easy, in fact. Will my presentation suffer much or at all if, it's, if the slides were removed? If it doesn't suffer much, remove it. Okay, if it's a central theme, do not remove it. But I'm sorry to say, most of the time, in fact, I would say 85% of the time, the answer to that question is that, no, my presentation will not suffer particularly if I remove that slide. In fact, if you really present your slide in a very synthetic way, 
there are very few key slides in the presentation, maybe five, maybe six. So think that in, put that in mind, but do not think about this when you prepare at the beginning. Think about that at the end when you, when you actually do the final cleanup of your slide before you give a presentation. And I, of course, we have to remember the famous, uh, the famous quote here, and it's something that's related to, to the famous uh, Donald Rumsfeld quote about the unknown knowns, known unknowns, and, and so on and so forth. But, but one thing that's important is this. Please remember always this. A listener can't miss what they don't know. So you may completely, uh, completely remove a topic, a subtopic. The, the audience is not going to be angry at you because they have no idea what that topic is since you're not talking about that. So they will not miss what they don't know. Remember that. You will know. But remember, it's about the audience, not about you. Of course, one thing that you have to remember is one topic per slide. Uh, I hope it was clear from this presentation, but never, ever, ever go for be uh, above one topic per slide. But I'm going to go further. Never, ever, ever go below one topic per slide. If there is no topic on your slide, drop the slide. If there is nothing of importance in the slide, remove it. But if more than one topic, eh, that's not so good. So in that case, split the slide. You know, in the old days, I'm talking about <laughs> more than 25 years ago, we were using actual slide. You know, those plastic sheet. And so we were trying to be mindful and not having too many of them because we had to print them or write them. And that was difficult. So sometimes we were go going really full many topics per slide. You know, I learned from my, my advisor that he was always those very nice slides with one topic per slide. But now, you know, it doesn't cost anything. Splitting slide on PowerPoint or Keynote or, or, or in LaTeX makes no difference. So you don't pay more. In fact, it makes your life easier to arrange your deck. So please split your slide if you have more than one topic and drop the slide if you don't have any topic. Now, of course, I have to talk about formatting a little bit. There are plenty of tutorials out there how to do formatting. I'm just going to go over this quickly. Um, limit the number of characters. I mean, nobody's interested in reading. You're not showing, you're not cut and paste from the talk. I mean, this is, this is crucial, of course. This is a crucial thing. Uh, the slide, like on the right, we see them a lot. Do people, uh, I didn't come to read. I mean, people who come to the talk didn't come to read. In fact, if they come, they do should not need the, the reading glasses. It's about you and the slide. It's about, it's about you, what you have to say at the, at the, to the audience. And so the slide, if, if, uh, if the audience wanted to read, they would probably get a book or get your paper to read it. That's, they didn't come for this. They didn't come to read text. So limit the number of characters. Full sentences not needed, right? Full sentences are not needed, obviously. But you try to, re by in this spirit of reducing the number of characters that are on the slide, uh, you don't have to need fu uh, full uh, sentences. Use emphasis. The emphasis is usually done with font. Uh, you can use italic, you can use bold. Uh, personally, I think that the underline doesn't work at all for slides. I do not recommend using underlining for emphasis on slide. You can, but I think between the colors and the bold and italic, you should be able to do something uh, already very nice. And please keep uniform format. Uh, that's just that's just painful when you go over 25 different fonts and 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 that are all going all over the place, especially for math. When they just you keep your brain, you you still ask the audience to adapt uh, how to read your slide because you're changing the font uh, constantly. I personally love dark backgrounds. I think you probably have noticed this in this presentation. Uh, again, this is historically we were using those slides, those plastic slide, and they, of course the background had to be transparent, <laughs> otherwise you would not see anything. So that's the reason why we, see, we have been using white background. And frankly, I don't know why the, the default is white, because it makes much more sense to use a dark background when you project it on, on a projector, for example, or even for a YouTube presentation. So, I recommend using dark backgrounds, even black, ba dark, even black backgrounds. 
Uh, just to give you an idea, a crowded slide is your worst enemy. I mean, this is an example here that find online. Uh, I, I'm sure the person who wrote this slide probably took 20 hours. Uh, it's, it may be intended for a poster, but even as a poster, it's very loaded. I mean, this slide is useless, as you know. Uh, slide preparation, no type, typo, please, or at least try to reduce the number of typos. And I'm saying this while I'm not even certain there's no typos in this presentation. But that's not the point. The point is that uh, make sure that you don't have uh, typos, at least not too many, um, because it shows sloppiness, and sloppiness is unprofessional. Uh, and so, of course, if you're unprofessional, how do you expect people to take you seriously if you cannot even be professional to, to, re to read your, your slides? And uh, one thing I have to say here is that people who make the most typos are those who, who usually say they don't. Because, and so this overconfidence is usually a recipe for disaster. Uh, it's important to budget time to prepare and to review. And frankly, my main advice here is to, use a to ask a colleague or classmate to proofread. Um, Especially when it's you know an invited talk or if you have a thesis talk or something like this, it's very do ask people to to proofread uh, and they will be very helpful. I like to give a couple of slides also on scientific content. Uh, plots, uh, as you know, a figure says a thousand words. On the right hand side, I just showed some example of a bad plot find on the internet. First of all, uh, here. It's not so much that the plot, plot is not readable. Well, it is not readable in the sense that the font are too small, the labels are too small. Uh, I don't see legends, I don't see units, and of course the bottom plot is uh, as being the scale is wrong, the y-axis is wrong, so all the data points are, are actually at zero. Um, so this is a graph that you have to think a little bit about. Again, if you think about the audience and you think about, okay, if I were part of the audience, why would I want to get from that, from that plot? Usually that's a good guiding principle. Uh, use equations sparingly. Uh, equations are useful, of course, especially in science, math, and, and other scientific uh, uh, presentation. But do not use too many equations. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's just simply complicated. Uh, that makes complicated. Uh, and in fact, m people sometimes use equation to show, oh, I'm going to show them what I've solved. I, I've, I've heard that so many times, especially for undergraduate research. Uh, but remember, it's not about you showing you're smart. You know, if people listen to you all the way to the end of your talk, they will know you're smart. They don't, you don't need to, you don't need to impose that on them. So it's about the audience. If you went to a talk, would you be interested to listen to equations after equations after equations, even though those equations are available in your, in your paper? This is another example of a bad plot, uh, completely unreadable, too much information. So too much information kill the information. Uh, so be careful. Uh, there are plenty of, of plotting uh, software out there. It takes time. It does take time to get a nice plot. It does, but it's a habit. And you go faster and faster as you make the plot. So try to also adopt a, a style that you like. And if you keep the same style for all your presentation, that will make your life much easier. Uh, another mistake is when you try to make schematics, like this one, for example, in physics, uh, to help students understand the concept or you help the audience. And then you make a conceptual mistake. I mean, like here, you are mixing up, uh, you're mixing Arrows, what do, you do, do the arrow mean? I mean, the, maybe the arrow may mean some, some kind of, a, may, mean, may mean a force, I guess, gravity, friction, maybe, maybe, maybe drag, but kinetic energy is not a force. So here we are trying to, we are, this slide is an example why students hate physics, because if the concept, the concept in physics are not very complicated, but if you convey them, if you mix the different concepts, then of course everybody gets confused. So make sure that you avoid conceptual mistakes when you make, uh, when you make your... Um, the next slide is an example of too many equations. Of course, we all know those equations. Continuity equation in Navier-Stokes. Uh, completely unreadable. Very useful if, if for a resource for... for a, a resource for students if they need a resource later. It's a very slide that probably took time to write, uh, but this is, this is not a slide that you want to give in your talk. Uh, you want to really see what matters and what the audience need in order to understand the rest of the presentation. Uh, finally, 
this is probably more important slide over the since for the past 10 minutes uh, slide preparation about the scientific content I personally think that a presentation should focus on concept uh, rather than on the math the 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 machinery of the math the reason why I'm saying this is because I am a strong believer the concepts are much harder to grasp than to get the math and um, in fact I would even go further than this I would even say that students usually use the math excuse as a safety vest uh, they can do the math, they can go through the motion, they can solve Schrodinger equation, they can solve for um, Gibbs potential or what have you. And so they can do the math. And the math is complicated, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the math is easy. It's just that the math is not done by looking at somebody do it. It's, it's done on a piece of paper after the class or before the class. And very often students, they go and do the math. It's a lot of work, they spend a lot of time. They can do the math and they say, yeah, I got it. Then you ask them a question about concept and they have no idea. They were able to go through the motions. So it gives the false sense of security that you got it, even though that all you got was able to go through the motions. That, and I'm, again, I'm not saying it's an easy thing to go through the motion. The math is not easy, but the concept have been gone. However, what I also notice is that if students get first the concept, then the math becomes extreme, much easier. And intellectually, it's much more rewarding to understand concept. So what do they want? From the presentation you give or from a lecture you give, I think it's really important to go through the concept, but do not forget the math. The math has to be strong, the one that you show, and it has to be part of a homework system. So if you give homework or assignment, uh, this is where you do the math. So this, of course, what I just said applies for courses, not for an invited talk, for example. Another thing is that students learn at different paces, and, but they do not necessarily get the concept at different pace. What they do, they do the math at different paces. Uh, and, so, and again, a person who is slow at doing the math at that, that high level, right? undergraduate uh, studies in, in, in physics, math, chemistry, and so on, engineering, those who are slow are still very fast in the grand scheme of things. However, they may be 20% slower than the fastest one. And so if you go through the math during the talk, well, they are lost, they, feel they, are fa they think they are failures, that they are not failures, because what's really important is to get the concept, and then they do the math at their own pace at home. So that I, I really like to, to, to insist on this. Uh, that's also a matter of respecting your audience. Um, finally, one thing that, uh, not finally, but another thing about the scientific content, uh, provide multiple sources. Um, if you give a, if, again, if it's more about a lecture here, about a, a, a class in the classroom, if you give a talk, uh, if you present your, if you, if you give course, make sure you follow a book and you follow it closely so that student can go back to the book and get a different way to present the same material. Uh, that's the best way to, to enrich uh, the students. So first, repeat, repeat the hard concept, recap. Uh, as well. Make sure you always go back and do not assume students know. Uh, there are also different ways to learn. Some students are visual learners, others need to uh, listen, others uh, just simply just need to, to go through the motion and, and this is fine. Others, some people need to go to work with others in groups and it's all good. Uh, there are different ways to learn. Remember, what's your objective? Your objective is for students to learn the difficult stuff. There are different ways to get there, and it's not about you or your preference. It's about giving the opportunities to students to get there. Uh, one thing that I like to mention again, it's important too in this time of diversity, and, and especially for the, the, the difficulty that minorities and others are, are suffering, in, especially in the STEM world. Uh, so we all have a, a, a role to play here. Uh, about knowing your audience. Never, ever, ever disparage your audience. Keep, make sure that if there is any tension between students, you are in charge, you are the leader. That happens even at the highest level, it happens. So this is important to be the person to keep this, uh, uh, to keep this in check. Uh, be mindful of use of proper pronouns and again, I hear people say, oh, what is this business about pronouns? Well, it's not about you. 
again, it's about the audience. So the point is what is important to the person that you're talking to. It's not about what's important to you. So what's important to the person you're talking to. And this is really what we are talking about. So be mindful of that. Um, so this is where you have to, this is, this is a, a easy uh, habit, again, is put, to put the student as the central place. Uh, do not let other students run the show. Uh, you will always have a student or a person who will ha ask 99% of the question or will try to, but it's a good idea to say, oh, maybe we should hear from somebody else now. Or maybe we'll get back to you later. You know, it's fine. Don't be nice, be, be kind, but make sure that it's not a one person show. Uh, I hate to have to say this, uh, but when you make jokes, not all jokes are good. Okay, not all jokes are good. Sexist, political, homophobic jokes are not really jokes. Uh, in fact, uh, I have no idea why anybody would do a sexist, homophobic, or political joke in a, in a STEM class, or in any classroom. Uh, unfortunately, it happens. Uh, please, uh, that, there is no part there. I would even go further. Uh, it's important to hear everybody's, uh, everybody's point of view, but it's not about you imposing your point of view. Uh, it's, 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 so, it's a very delicate thing to do, but... Uh, um, be mindful of this. And I like, I like this, this punchline here that we have seen on Reddit a few, few years ago, that a joke has a punchline, always. If the punchline is the person, that's not a joke, okay? I hope that summarizes the whole thing. And finally, I'd like to give you uh, general advices. Provide references, even if you don't talk about them, provide them. I mean, even if you don't, don't actually cite them explicitly down the slide. Never ever read your slide, okay? Uh, that's uh, general advice. Be professional. Stand tall and look people in the eyes. When I say stand tall, I'm not saying that be, be six, foot, six foot five. That's not the point. The point stand tall mean uh, show that you are in charge, okay? Show that you're in charge and look people in the eyes. And uh, understand the audience and, and make sure you keep order, like I said in the previous slide. Uh, it's okay to say, to tell people to move on. You know, at some point, uh, you, have, you don't want to be dragged into, into a place where you would spend too much time. You have to move on. You're also in charge of the, of the clock. And one extremely important advice that I got, I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, this, this uh, seminar I took with somebody who got Grammy Awards for, for, uh, for movies making, movie making and so on and so forth. And I, I'm going to warn you, you won't like it. I personally hated it. Uh, and yet that was one single most important advice that helped me. And the advice is the following. Record yourself. Record yourself and listen. Record your voice, record even yourself giving the talk physically and look at the body language. Do that and listen and watch. And yes, you are going to see all those things that you're absolutely unaware that you've been doing. Okay, do that. And you will realize that there are a number of things that you can easily fix. But because you didn't know yourself well, because you never actually Record it, watch yourself give a talk. You didn't know about it. So this is something, this is something you will not like. For personally, I, there is nothing more, there is nothing more that I hate than my own voice. But, uh, and fortunately I don't talk to myself too much, which is, which is good. But um, it's important to do this. And it's, you don't have to do it for all your talks. Just do it for the first few talks. You will see how, how good this is. Uh, but, you know, after all, all this, you have to realize that you are learning. We are lifelong learners. And your first few presentations might be not too good. Even later, you might realize, you give a talk and you say, man, that was horrible. I just messed this up. I should have done this and this and that. Yeah, you will have those moments at any age, any time of your seniority in, in science or, or any place. But be kind to yourself. Accept that you are not infallible. And what matters is not so much how bad or how well your last talk went. It matters how well the next talk will go. So in summary, your talk is about the audience. You have to spend a lot of time to prepare a good talk. 
And you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes. This is the empathic thing. You have to spend time to prepare. Yes, I already mentioned this. Spend time to prepare. Do not wing it. I like this. I, I, when I learned this word the first time when I, came, when I came from Belgium, I had, oh, you know, you can wing it. And I said, what do you mean wing it? I don't understand this, this idi uh, idiom. And so I said, I realized, no, you can't wing it. I mean, are you kidding me? No, you have to prepare. You have to spend time to prepare. And also do not forget to spend time to prepare. All right. And finally, the talk is about the audience. It's not about you. After this, there will be a second part of this presentation, as I said before. And this part will be about two short examples of how to present a, com a complex topic to non-STEM and to STEM. But uh, I'm going to stop this recording here as it's already about uh, more than 50 minutes. Thank you very much if you come this far. And if you have any advice or uh, feedback, I will be more than happy to listen. Thank you.